governors elected on the platform of the opposition party, the People's Democratic Party, PDP, have expressed worries that what they see as the failure of the president, Mohammed Buhari-led government, to adequately govern the country has put insecurity on the rise. They also accuse the ruling party of deploying intimidating tactics to lure some of them to join the ranks of the APC. Well, joining us to have this conversation is Andy Akpotive. He is a social reformer. Dimeji Fabii, a member of the PDP, and Uche Chuta, a political analyst. Thank you very much, gentlemen, for being part of the conversation. Thank you. Thank you so much, Father. So I'm going to start with you, um, Dimeji. The PDP is calling the presidency incapable and lacking uh, in ability to run the affairs of the country. Um, they're also blaming the, you know, the issue of insecurity on Mr. President. Is it just the job of the federal government to deal with insecurities and pockets of violence in states? I mean, state governors are also um, chief security officers of their state. So really, is this an issue or a situation of pointing one finger to the president and then, of course, the re rest of the fingers pointing to them? <clears throat> well, thank you. Good, me, uh, good evening, viewers, and good evening, gentlemen. Uh, um, there is something that is uh, very fundamental that we have to critically look into, and that is the concern of the Federal Republic of Nigeria, where the existence of this country takes its stand, takes its leg, takes everything from. As long as uh, we are running, we are still running on this constitution that we have, we'll continue to run into troubled waters as a nation. And I say this because when you look at our constitution, the power, you know, to the power to manage the security of this country solely rests on the federal government. I say this because the federal government controls the police, controls the army, controls the DSS, controls every security agency in Nigeria. And then much, nothing, nothing is more, I mean, not, nothing much is left for the state, you know, to control. So when somebody says that, when people place it on the door, at the doorstep of the federal government, people who do that, you can never blame them because the federal government calls the shot when it comes to the management of the entire security apparatus and access of this country. Yes, the security issue is a, is a matter that concerns all and all, everybody including the governor, including the citizens. So the governors too have rights. They have the, 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 the most the part of solving the problem of insecurity in the country. So for the PDP governors to have come out to say, Mr. President seems not to be doing enough. You can't blame them because the presidency of Nigeria controls everything. It's not limited to President Buhari alone. Every successive government with the present constitution controls the security of us, and you can't blame anybody who places at their doorstep that they are the ones that are not doing enough. Again, it's unfortunate that we have a Mr. President that is not leading from the front as he promised. He's now leading from behind. He told us he will lead from the front, and that's, I guess, uh, the entire Nigerians and in tandem with what the PDP governors have said, except those perhaps who do not want just shy away from the truth. As far as I know, the federal government has more blame, you know, to carry in this matter. Even as I agree, but even as I agree that the issue of security has to be all encompassing. All of us, both the citizens, both the governors, and both uh, the lead and the led, must be part of it. So the solution to our security problem requires that every Nigerian citizen, requires that everybody in the position of authority must contribute their own quota. We cannot continue to have killing. At one, on one thing, every day, when you open your television or radio set or you are living, listening to news, it's about killing on a daily basis. Then that calls to question the capacity of the government, the current government of the country. Because in the past, you had issues, series of security challenges. And we know how the government of those days responded to, to those challenges. So what we are saying is that Mr. President, and indeed the entire federal government, to try as much as possible to respond to respond adequately to all the security challenges. Enough okay. of killing innocent Nigerians, enough of destroying properties, enough of banditry, enough of harassment, killing, and all that. Okay. It's unacceptable. So the government must stand up on its feet and do what is right to secure Nigeria. For that is what they swore to do. Okay. Let me go to you, Uche. Um, in fact, it's interesting to know that all three of my guests are from different regions of Nigeria. So this question, obviously, uh, to you, Uche, 
the governors of um, the PDP have said that they are deeply worried that all over um, the country, the, uh, all our facilities and, and differences are being used or stretched thin, in other words. Um, we're now beginning to have a lot more of ethnic differences and biases and there's some form of hatred, um, you know, spreading across the country under the watch of this government. In fact, they're saying that this, all of this is happening because the government of the day lacks the capacity to lead us as a united country. What's your take? It's true because uh, Nigeria is not a surprise. What I mean, Nigeria is not a surprise. Like we've been in existence as a nation for over 60 years and we've found a way of working together. Um, the stakeholders have found a way of working together. It has not been a perfect union, but we've actually found a way of working together. Uh, this government in its bid to seize power exploited our differences and entered into power and to sustain their power, they kept on, you know, bridging the gap with, you know, not bridging the gap, expanding the gap between our differences, all in, in to distract us, distraction. You know, these are all distracting tactics to distract us from the inept leadership. We have the Fulani headsmen, which we always talk about in the news. Why should we talk about the cows every single day when the economy is down, poverty is increasing, we have the unemployment rates is increasing, but all we focus on is talking about cows, distractions. And this is because this government doesn't just have the capacity, it's beyond them. It's beyond them to lead. It was, it was easy for them to act as opposition. It was easy for them to, from the sidelines, attack the government before they, they emerged. But now they're in power, they're totally clueless. Like, they don't really know what to do. That's just basically what it is. And it's so easy for you to divide, exploit those differences between us. Because those differences have been there from day one. You know, left a lot of people, we should not be one country. This is a country that just left a civil war, a bitter civil war where some people are still angry. The children of the people who are affected are still angry. And so it's easy to exploit these differences. It's easy to exploit the, these things. And this government has not played a unifying factor in this. We, we don't know anything about what they're doing. We have a national orientation agency. We don't know what they're doing. We have a Minister of Information, uh, we, a Minister of Information who is just basically um, distributing propaganda. So that's just where we are, uh, you know, and they, they don't have the capacity. We're going to waste our time, keep on talking and talking and talking. They don't have the capacity. They don't even have the capacity to push constitutional reform. They don't have that capacity. Okay. Let me come to you, Andy. Oh, um, this is not the first time, Andy, that issues and concerns of insecurity have been raised in the country. In fact, former presidential spokesperson, Donny Okupe, Dr. Donny Okupe, um, raised you know concerns about the level of insecurity in the country even as we're looking forward to 2023 he's even afraid in fact in his words that it might affect the elections and he may not even hold he called it um he, he referred to it as an illusion that he may never really hold if we do not deal with the issue of insecurity in nigeria and then the governors of the pdp seem to be re-echoing the same words of dr donio kupe uh, so why why do you think it's taken the government of the day so long to address this issue of insecurity? Is it because they became awake to their responsibility a bit too late, or is it just that they are bereft of ideas? What could be the reason? So, um, Maria, let me just quickly uh, start by saying um, I like that uh, I should quickly say to you that I accept our condolences uh, over what happened. Um, and let me just jump in on it. If you took a patient who had gunshot injury into the hospital and you had nurses alone in the hospital without a surgeon with the competencies to do an exploratory laparotomy, with which they were going to use to take out the, the bullets and attend to the patient, that patient will die. What am I talking about? It speaks to competencies. What have you got the trainings for? What have you got the learnings for? What have you got the tutelage for? If you are just somebody who is giving to opposition, you know, what happened with APC particularly is they were the best at opposition. They spoke to high heavens about how they taught best to address issues without 
you know, following the nitty gritty without following the ABCs that they would need to achieve in those things. Now, power was given them. And because like that patient, Nigeria right now has been short. Nigeria has not just been short on the stomach. Nigeria has been short on the neck and on the leg, meaning that we are no longer mobile. We cannot move. We have been shot on the neck, meaning that we cannot turn our neck. We cannot move from one position to the other. We cannot see what others are seeing, what other countries are seeing. We have been shot on our stomach, meaning that everything that allows us to be able to feed and to be able to digest whatever it is that we have been fed is ampered and is affected. But you see, what's happening is that we have at best nurses in the hospital right now. What have I said nurses is not any dissing on nurses. Yeah, but I have said this to say that it's only surgeons that have the competencies to attend to those bullet wounds. The question you have asked is simple. The people we have in power today, simply from the president to the least of them, they do not have the capacity with which first, with which to fix the insecurity issue. Secondly, they do not have the political will to confront the but, issues well, we asked, and address we asked them for the, the service way they to should be, be addressed. And the what? president did it. We asked that the police uh, inspector general be chained, and that has been done. So maybe there's some political it, will. It, I, I'd like to play the devil's it, advocate it, here. They, they probably beyond, have done it, something. We it, cannot really just say they haven't yes. done anything. Marianne is beyond changing the uh, the the um, um, security chiefs. This is I, I, this was what I said when I was interviewed when they when they talked about changing security chiefs. I said if you have a car that has got the mechanics that is failing, the braking system is failing, the clutch system is failing, the fuel pump is already occluded, and there was a driver that was driving you from Potako to Baesa. And because the car was jerking, you thought that if you just took that driver out of the car and brought a new driver, the car will no longer jerk. <laughs> and the car will move you very speedily and quickly to Baesa. This is the fate. This is how we are playing with security and insecurity in the country. The fuel pump is occluded. The braking system, security braking system is bad. Okay. The mechanics of the car is bad. It's not about changing the driver. If you brought a Formula One driver to sit on that car called the security of Nigeria and attempt to drive that car from Potako to Baesa, he would not be able to fix it or would not be able to drive it. All you would need to do is first to acknowledge Diagnosis is very critical to treatment. Okay. We are failing to make the diagnosis for security and insecurity in our country. And that's why you have all of this problem. And you know we are, why we are failing first? We do not have the competencies with which to use to make the diagnosis. Okay. Two, all right. we are not ready to make it because of all of the political inclinations right. that are right. hanging Andy. around making the diagnosis. You okay, know, Andy. who are we going to have to pander towards? Who are we going right. to have to be subtle towards? I will, I will if we come back this to you. Decision, for instance, Marianne, we took I'm sorry, Andy, I will come back to you. So that because we, we don't have too much time on our hands right now. So I'm going to ask a general question to everybody and everybody will take turns to answer it. Now, um, it seems that there's a lot on the plate of not just Mr. President, but the APC as a party in itself. The, the government has so much on its plate, but then we're all asking... Um, for a lot. And I'm not saying we do not have a right to ask for these things. We're, I mean, in the, in the middle of the day, um, robberies are taking, places, uh, taking place. Kidnappings are taking place. I mean, it's happening as, as the clock is ticking. But what should be, just hold on, Andy, what should be government's priority right now? Healing the nation or dealing with insecurity? Or should they be doing both at the same time? Which should be prioritized going forward? Because, of course, we want to all sleep with our eyes closed. But then if something happens, do I want to save a Nigerian or do I want to save a Calabar person? Because this is the issue that we're facing. We're looking at the issues with, through the prism of ethnicity and, of course, the issue of religion. So 
what should come before the other. I'll start with you, uh, Demeji, because you obviously are of the PDP. Well, thank you very much. Um, the solutions to Nigeria problems have never been far-fetched because the solutions are found around us here. We have Nigerian great people, you know, that the only thing they desire is the simple basics of life. Protect us, give us good economy. And unfortunately, we've not been blessed as a nation, especially in this dispensation with the leaders who have, just like my fellow you know, guys there said, who have the capacity to actually do it. Isn't it, isn't it curious that why these people are supposed to be pro, I mean, preferring solution to all these myriads of problems that are believed in this country, they are rather chasing after our position to, uh, you know, be preparing for the next election. Isn't it quite disturbing that rather than these people to sit down and say, this is what we promised Nigeria, how can we give it to them? They are rather chasing shadows. If anybody criticizes them, they go after you. So I am, I am, I am worried because... Um, Giving them any of this, I don't think they even have the capacity to handle any. This is the six years in government, and uh, these problems have persisted. It means that the capacity, like my co colleagues there said, are not there. Okay. So as far as I know, and my prayer is that God should just see us through to the end of their tenure, okay. so that we can have a new lease of life. Okay. It is clear, it is obvious that we're in for it with this leadership presently. So as far as I know, Whichever one you ask them to do, I doubt if they have the capacity to do it. Whether, okay. so, because they are the one that, even their body language is even funny more, the embers of ethnicity. All right. And again, on the other hand, we don't have, have time. Uh, uh, Mr. Dimeji, I'm so sorry. We need to move on to um, Uche. Quickly, Uche, and then, of course, we'll go to Andy so we can wrap this up. I mean, we're, we're just going to repeat ourselves. Um, at some point of time, the VP seemed to show some capacity at trying to unify, you know, when he was traveling around, then they emasculated, removed. Yeah, I mean, he's virtually a sitting duck vice president right now. He doesn't have the power to do anything. Uh, so he was like, you know, a small glimmer of hope in their government. We don't have that. So what, what can they do? If they, a quick win for them, empower the VP again, um, give him, you know, stop, stop giving him the media ban because it seems the media doesn't even cover him anymore. It seems as if there's a media ban on him. Allow him to go out there, allow him to talk to the people, allow him to try, try and bridge bridges, allow him to talk and say, you know what, I said that APC has failed as a party, we failed as a government, we should, could have done more. And just talk to the people, you know, um, you know, and, and meet them and just like, let's try and, you know, and their appointments, loop side appointments. They appointed a new IG of police. He was not supposed to become the IG of police. There was somebody else who was supposed to be the IG of police. They deliberately promoted the AIG to a DIG and now retired him just because they know want someone from Bielsa to become the IG. You know, they need to stop these loop-sided appointments. You know, show some semblance of we want this country to work. They're not showing any of that. Hmm. Okay, and finally, Andy. So, so, uh, so I'm, I'm so sorry, uh, Marianne. I'm, I'm not even as optimistic as a lot of Nigerians. Um, Why not? I, I do not think, I do not think, can you hear me? I can hear you. Hello. I can hear you. Yes, I do not think that these people even have the capacity to heal this nation. If you have seen all of their actions that they have taken thus far, even in the heat of all of these challenges that we are having, all the actions that they have taken, their actions that are further setting us up for um, further insecurity and, and a lot more challenges. Okay. This government is just simply bereft. It's just simply unaware. Right. It's just beating the air right now. They came in not prepared to, go. to govern. So I there is so nothing sorry. that can come out of them. I I'm so sorry, but I want to thank you all, gentlemen, them. for being here. I'm so sorry we are really out of time. Thank you, Andy Apotive, Uche Chuta, and uh, Mr. De uh, uh, Mr. Dimeji, I beg your pardon, for being part of this conversation. Um, we have to go. Thank you so much. Thank you. All right. Well, uh, I'll quickly give you my take right after this quick break. Here's my take. The Nigerian situation could be compared to that of a Humpty Dumpty scenario where, uh, where we are sitting on a great wall of terrorism, banditry, kidnapping. Our leadership has the job of preventing 
Nigeria from cracking and having a great fall by making sure that underlying issues like ethnic hatred, religious biases are addressed. Now also in preparation for 2023, let's not just get ready with our PVCs, let's be ready with our demands. When these politicians come with their rice and their salt and wrappers, stop them in their tracks and ask the real hard heating questions. Assess them, be certain, do not be fooled. We can't keep allowing this endless cycle of give and take politics. We must no longer gloss over these things. Advocacy for good governance isn't just by word of mouth alone, but by action. So be prepared. Do not say you weren't ready. I am Mary Anacle, thanking you for being part of the show. Have a good evening.